Okay, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to another episode of the College Made Easy podcast. Um, so, as always, we have Ben and Tim, but we also have Emily on today's episode. Um, before we get into question of the day and everything, Emily, do you, do you want to just introduce yourself again to the fans? Because I know some fans were asking for you to come back on our podcast. Oh, that's cute. Hey, guys. Um, I'm happy to be back. I'm Emily, I'm business student studying corporate finance and entrepreneurship and i was taking some time working on some startup stuff at home but i'm happy to make a guest appearance again awesome happy to have you cool. um so today i don't have the question of the day ben actually has it so ben what what are we going to be answering first i'm excited what is something you've tried that you will never ever try again I have an answer already. Go ahead. So during this quarantine time, my dad had me mow the lawn. I don't know how you guys do it, but it was like a full body workout. Yeah. Not Scott. You guys. <laughs> what kind of you, wow. you guys? guys. <laughs> <laughs> like wait, 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 wait. Did you just assume yeah. that Tim mows the lawn? <laughs> <laughs> I have a good story here. <laughs> okay well whoever in your family who mows lawn or if you hire someone kudos to them because it was exhausting i was sore for like three days and i underestimated it completely well what kind of lawnmower do you use like do you have a, a push mower like a stand push on mower. oh yeah <laughs> no i have a sit on and like really and, and your yard is big so, That's a good point. I have a pretty big. I, I don't know how large both the, the other two's yards are. My yard's not that big, but Ben has a huge yard. It's like an acre and a half. <laughs> oh, yeah. You need. Yeah. I'm out there for like an hour and a half. I'm out. Two hours. Oh, I just thought I was doing this for 25 minutes and I was like, okay. Sore for three days? Oh, my gosh. You got to do this oh, more yeah. often. Well, I didn't even finish it. I let my dad take it out. Who, who needs a gym in quarantine? Just mow the right. lawn. Ooh. <laughs> Damn. Um, so I have a good story about mowing the lawn. I have a gift. It's called seasonal allergies. Every time I mow the lawn, it's not my body that aches for three days. It's like just disgusting, like runny nose, crying literally all day. Itchy it's eyes. Awful. Yeah. So I got out of mowing the lawn. I did it like once when I was like 15. I was like, dad, this really just is not a good idea. And then my brother turned like 11 around then, a little bit later. But ever since then, he's been mowing the lawn. So that's, that's the lawn at my house. But what's something I've done that – I'm trying to think of like foods are coming to mind, but like – That's what I was originally thinking, but then I thought something that's a real like, answer. Like I know of some foods that I wouldn't have again, like unpopular opinion, chocolate and peanut butter, two of the worst things out there. But I have eaten them again. That's you know? I mean, it could be like <laughs> some people would say a class, like what's something I'm never gonna do again is like take that class. Oh. But that's like an average answer. Like you want something exciting. Not yeah. like mowing the lawn is exciting. I'm gonna stop talking. <laughs> <laughs> I'll let Scott go since he has one. Okay, and then, I have and a, we can I, come back. I have a really good story. Ben and Tim know how much suffering this caused me, but Something I'm never going to do again is when I get a... Okay, Ben's gone. <laughs> Bye, Ben. <laughs> Bye, Ben. <laughs> He'll be back. Um, so Tim knows what I'm about to say. Uh, there he is. Okay, Ben. So as I was saying, when you get, a, when you get an email for a sponsorship uh, who, who, who says, I'm going to pay you a lot of money if you promote my software, and then, and then you go uh... click that software... And then when you download that software onto your computer, um, you get completely hacked and they take over your entire computer and I lose my entire YouTube channel and uh, a whole month's revenue. <laughs> Did that happen? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That yeah. was like this year. It happened uh, end of December, uh, all of January. That's awful. Oh. But didn't he say he was a Nigerian prince or something? No, no. It was, uh, <laughs> I don't think that helps his case. No, they, they created no. a fake website, fake software. Basically, I, down, I was an idiot, downloaded it on my computer, and they mm -hmm. took control. They hacked all my passwords and everything. Um, yeah. Never going to do that again. 
Hmm. I would never try again. Um, octopus sauce or whatever for pasta. It's like oh, the yeah, squid ink. Squid ink, yeah, squid ink. I don't know what. It was octopus splitting. sauce. I don't There's know. There's gonna be comments about this later. Yes, there will. <laughs> we can just cut it out. <laughs> I would never. Oh, we're not. I will never again try squid ink sauce on pasta. Terrible. Your tongue is black. It tastes bad. Your tongue is literally black for like the whole day. Hmm. Okay, Tim. Tim. Tim, you're up. Come on. I know the pressure's on now. You're at bat. <laughs> I'm at bat. Got. Don't want to strike out. That's it. Baseball. Wow, Tim. Any sport? <laughs> no, no. I, I'll give. I'll gym. give a few more sports another try. But <laughs> the gym. What about the gym. Didn't you say that? No, I'm giving the gym another try. It's yeah, terrible. that's true. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah, I'll go. He's with not going to give the gym a try. All you alone. do is stand around. Wow, I'm really attacking these sports on these yeah. past two episodes. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Are we ready to get started? Oh, I'm ready. That oh. was a good question, though, Ben. Good job. Thank you very much. Google never fails. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, my question was going to be, if you had the world's attention for 30 seconds, what would you say? Yes, but... I had the same website. I just scrolled down yes. a lot more. <laughs> yeah, that was the first option. So I'm glad you took this one. Yeah. That might be a fun future one, though. We'll keep that in mind. Well, yeah, we'll just cut that out. <laughs> like, there's so many out. things that I'm going to suggest that we cut out that we're just not keeping it out. <laughs> Don't cut it out. <laughs> okay, so who wants to explain what happens to us, uh, what happened to us like two months ago? Could give it a whirl. Unless Ben had the face of somebody who really wanted to jump on this. <laughs> I was like, I don't want to do this, but I feel like Tim's going to do this. <laughs> so I was like... Oh, you were like, yikes, to somebody I else? Like, I don't know. My face makes faces. I don't know how to make faces. It just makes faces. All right. So our school, like a lot of other colleges, shut down mid-March. But I think one of the things that was different for us than a lot of schools is right before our school shut down and transitioned to online classes, we were entering into spring break. So we all went home for spring break. And there was like kind of like a loose chatter that we might not come back, but everybody really, I'd say the vast majority of people expected us to come back. Yeah. So everybody left all of our, their stuff at school. Well, almost said, almost said what our school is called. Everybody yeah. left their stuff. And then uh, spent the first half of spring break at home. Then we got an email that said spring break was extended. And then during like, the- woohoo. Yeah. <laughs> The, really the thinking was over, if though, anybody for the rest had of the semester. <laughs> that's true. If yeah. anybody had been traveling, the thinking was, you know, they wouldn't bring it back into our school population if they just extended spring break. Well, during the extended spring break, all the other colleges uh, shut down for the rest of the semester. So we got an extension, not of spring break, but beginning of online classes, which then got extended to the rest of the year. I that's remember brief- sitting in your room when we yeah. were packing our stuff to go to spring break. And I was like, guys, I don't know why, but I feel like we're not coming back. So take all your stuff. And Ben and Tim were like, should we take the TV? Should we take like all the stuff? And Tim brought the TV <laughs> home. But we like, even preparing for the worst and like bringing your stuff home, we still never really yeah. fully understood what we were getting ourselves into in terms of, this amount of time at home yeah i, I mean we even had a school for that one week and it was awful <laughs> during the one week extension to spring break we had a day where we were allowed to go back to get our stuff in case we had left any textbooks and even then like it was pretty clear that because most schools had already shut down for the rest of the semester it was super unlikely we were going back but like i left my bed made because you know there was like that hope you know maybe you know, didn't want to leave, but we're all going up now to get our stuff. So I left my ultimate frisbee uniform. <laughs> I can't wait to go in and get everything. Yeah, I'm already moving out. Know what's there? We'll talk time. about that after the episode. <laughs> I went okay. back. I went back this Saturday. It was like super depressing. 
Were yeah. there a lot of people on campus? No, there's hardly anyone. So anyway, to be clear, what we just finished, the semester that we just finished was like emergency pandemic classes and stuff. And honestly, it must have been hard on the teachers too. Like they had a week or two to move classes online. Like it was hard enough for us to take online classes. They had to plan this, which really didn't I took, happen very well. <laughs> I took all of Calc 2 in a half semester emergency pandemic online format. <laughs> And he barely it was, passed. It was strange. I took online classes. I did not barely pass. You couldn't use PowerPoint. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah, I didn't have honestly, any of those, thankfully. I feel so bad for students who had professors that, like, aren't good with technology. Like, where, yeah. whatever school you go to, just, like, that must have been so hard, you know? Yeah. And, like, we're in college, but I would help my little cousin do homework throughout the week. And, like, yeah. he's in fifth or sixth grade. Imagine Zooming with like elementary, middle school level kids. It's definitely a totally different scene. Like keeping them engaged for an hour or going over content, you know? Mm -hmm. I think as like the education level gets higher, there's some level of simplicity. Um, if we wanna if we wanna discuss the hardest part of the switch or the emergency online classes, for me, I, I just I just say it's the environment you're in. I mean, we touched on that with the interview with John a little. Um, you, When you're in your house, you're in a different mindset. It's more of like spend time with family. You're, re re you're relaxing more. Um, it's very difficult to actually get work done in your house. Like right now, my um, my dad is working from home downstairs in his office. And like he's, he even says like it's so hard to focus. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It puts I mean, things into perspective too. Like a lot of us, um, like a lot of people I know, they're like, oh, I hope to be a stay at home mom or like, I hope I have a job where I can work from home. And like, this shows us like real experience of what that's like. And it's definitely not easy. Like sometimes my dogs are barking in the back. My mom's like, come watch a movie. And I'm trying to do, I'm doing a uh, one month semester of summer classes. And it's like, 13 weeks squeezed into one month and my mom's like come make pizza with me come watch a movie with me my dad's like let's go for a run and you're like uh hold on because i have a test tomorrow on four mm -hmm. chapters and i'm freaking out so it's different for sure honestly i think that was part of the hardest part like well first of all the hardest part was motivation and just there was no motivation at all um it was non-existent it was so bad but like along with no motivation is like when you finally get motivation, like, yeah, like your mom's like, let's make pizza or let's watch a TV show or come sit with us or whatever. So like you want to say yes, like you want to hang out with your family, but like you have to get stuff done. And that was just rough. Like it was not pleasant. Especially cause like I'm used to both my parents working nine to five throughout the week. So it's so mm. different now, like having a full house all the time. And I think it's super fun. Mm. But like, I'm, I think that a part of me is like trying to absorb all of it because I don't think there'll ever be another time in my life where everyone's at home every single day. Yeah. So it's like trying to make the most out of a tough situation too. I have heard yeah. a lot of stories of like parents, <clears throat> parents that like never thought that all of the kids would be back in the same house or something like that. And like they're having a lot of fun with it. Yeah, that must be nice. <laughs> it's not fun. <laughs> Some fights are breaking out too within families. Oh, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Big time. We're different people than we used to be. So right. putting us all back in the same house. Like, um, like the one thing that I was going to add is I remember freshman and sophomore year, I brought like a ton of work home for every break I went on. And I never have done a college assignment at home. Same. Oh, oh my, my God. God. It's like yeah. in the backpack in the corner of your <laughs> yeah. room. You never touch it. No I do way. That all the time. I'll do it all Sunday night when I get back. Yes. So, uh, even so, then junior year, you know, like uh, Thanksgiving break, just decided, you know what, I'm not even bringing a backpack home. Hmm. Didn't do any work. I was happy with myself. I knew myself at that point. So when I realized classes were going to be online, I was like, uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I think just training my mind to like be able to do work at home, especially because even in high school. I'll admit, especially this being like a college themed channel, I guess we should be like honest. I was not a good high school student as far as getting work done. So home has never been a place where I did a lot of work. 
I think so there's like no safe place to study, if that makes sense. Like right. at college, you can go to the library, you can lock your door in the room, you can go to like that building where you have that like quiet room. Um, mm-hmm. Like there's so many spots at a college or university where it's like, okay, headphones in, do work. It's not like social hour, it's not hanging out. But at home, it's like, are you gonna sit on the kitchen table? Are you gonna go to your basement? No, my mom is working in the basement. Like, it's finding that hotspot is really, really hard. Yeah, something really important to me when I'm when I'm like a homeowner is I really want an office in my house because this has like been my entire life, and I want a space in my house to do work. It's like a desperate long term goal. And are you gonna have a giant uh, gaming PC with like dual monitors and all that? Yeah, uh, the computer is going to be like a room. That way I can do the video <laughs> editing on it. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait to have my own setup. It's going to be sick. <laughs> it's going to be like 20 Mac Pros. Spend $60,000 on a Mac Pro. <laughs> <laughs> I need to edit Pixar movies. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, I sent, if you've seen previous episodes, you know that I went to a, a two-year community college before going to the four-year school that we go to. So at the two-year school, like I would go to school, I'd take classes, but all of my home, all of my work would come home with me. And I would just sit at my desk that's in the corner of my room and just do work all the time. So like Tim, I was really bad at doing work in high school. Like uh, I would do like during free periods and stuff during lunch, like I would go to my favorite like teacher's room or whatever and do work then. So I didn't have to do it at home because I knew I couldn't. But at uh, in the two-year college, I had to do the work at home. Well, I didn't have to, but like I was not comfortable at the two-year school, like going to the library or whatever. Like I like didn't have many friends yet, like for the first year. It's it probably a different really, environment at a two-year school because everyone's in and out, right? Yeah. It wasn't mm-hmm. until like the third semester of the second year that I uh, really started to make friends. And even then it wasn't like we could study together because we weren't in like the same classes. So um, I really really got to know my desk as a spot to do homework must be nice yeah and I (laughs) took I even took two online classes um so it would these online classes are wildly different from what we went through like the online classes that I took were like the professors had uh like lectures all written out already and they put up um powerpoints that like we're very explicit in what we had to know and uh like like literally put the lecture notes just like on we use blackboard at the old school like on the black mm-hmm. on blackboard and all of the notes all of the uh powerpoints even sometimes like that literally like scans of the textbook pages that we had to read or whatever like it was very straightforward it was very like detailed what we had to do this was like a week and a half of planning just video call them and explain stuff like that's not the same as online classes so while i definitely did better than most in the pandemic classes because i had already learned how to do homework at my desk the zoom classes were rough like not bueno (laughs) i saw a video and it was like 75 percent of the zoom class me looking at myself in the camera 25 percent like looking at my crush like something something random that that 25 percent changed like looking at my teacher figuring out how to work the system like yeah i thought it was funny literally every single word that i just said right now i'm looking at myself (laughs) yeah that's one of the weirdest things like yeah i'm staring at myself right now yeah this is what you do you know it's like I have a one, an hour and a half Zoom, and I'm going to do my makeup, get dressed, to look at myself in the camera. Hey, <laughs> like, me, I, I woke up and put a hat on and a shirt. Like, <laughs> yeah, and then I got a haircut. Usually those it was days, definitely interesting. Those mm-hmm. days where you're in your pajamas and you just turn your camera off because you don't want anyone to see you. <laughs> my teachers were savages. They were like, really? hey. Every like they they would chat and be like, everyone, please show your attendance and turn your camera on. There was kids who were like getting out of bed, like fixing their hair, like putting a robe on. I was like, oh my god. Yeah, I didn't have any professors like that, but yeah, I I think our school is definitely smaller with like about thirty kids per class. So 
I'm sure at bigger universities, there was less of a problem. Mm-hmm. Literally, and- in a class that Tim and I took together, it was like 1030 yeah. on a Monday morning when we would get on the call, like every single time, one of the kids would literally like, he would get on the call and then like sit up. And every time the professor was like, did you just get out of bed? And he'd be like, yeah, I just woke up. Like, this is <laughs> the thing. But did you guys see our school sent out something at the beginning of zoom classes and it was like online etiquette. Yeah. Right. And it was like, no, one of the things, it literally shirts yeah. must be worn. At all shirts times. must be worn. Um, professional, it said professional clothes, I think. So, like, they didn't want people in, like, I don't know, anything. Re- I mean, I took it as, like, anything revealing or. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, crop tops, ladies. Yeah. Oh, I thought that was directed at guys. Shirts. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think it was good that the school sent that, though. I mean, like, yeah. because the professors, like, how are the professors supposed to say that? You know, you got to stand up. I don't think professors. anyone took it seriously. I mean, That's true. some things that people did wind up taking seriously, like shirts must be worn. Like, well, would you would you guys really go on to Zoom with no shirt on? I mean, if I put the camera like, <laughs> I feel like it would take a real like bro, like a manly man, to be like. It has to be Jack. I would not do that. <laughs> I would either be like from the neck up, or like I would have to be jacked. Just no, but like my That's question, what I'm saying, like a real manly man. My question is, I don't why know, don't you have a shirt not on? Manly men. <laughs> I mean, like the bros, like the jacked up We're muscles. Not bros. I know, I know, like plenty of like, or I guess I don't know. Like when I was probably around twelve, I would like walk around the house shirtless, but. Like I, mean, I walk around. With I think Attaboy, adults. Tim, Attaboy. Attaboy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was really proud of myself. It's different. <laughs> like I like, feel like the once house, you get it's funny this discussion and going? comfortable, <laughs> but in class, yeah. it's different. Like ever since I've been like an adult, though, like I don't know, I don't, I don't walk around the house shirtless, and, and I think that's true of most adults. I don't mean to like yeah. assume it, but I, I think that it's more common for like young boys than like men. Unless you have a fitness not, YouTube channel, like most guys aren't doing that. I think Bradley Martin wears a, a shirt more than a lot of them, though. Yeah, true. I mean, granted, those tank tops are like low cut. Like <laughs> Bradley Martin's come on the podcast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what will we even talk about? <laughs> I don't even know. Do we transition uh, work, back workout to tips? How to get directly? Tank- Wait, what? Please. If we go back in the fall, we'll do College Made Easy. How to work out at your college gym featuring Tim. Yes. We'll do a vlog. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Emily, how can, do you use- God. Emily can record while we bust out. Yeah, out. how to use each machine. Yeah. Tim can rate them from 1 to 10. No. I go viral. With that. <laughs> no idea. Tim would have no idea what he's rating it. Full on. body transformation of Tim. On exper- yeah, on experience. Mm-hmm. Okay, let's go good. back to this topic. We're not bros. Oh God. We're bros. <laughs> Name is my bro. I, I don't want it. I know. I said bros <laughs> as in like manly men, muscle tees, and then you said, yeah, guys who are jacked. Yeah, guys who are jacked. They're not manly men. They're pussy men. They just want to look good. But you know what I mean, though. <laughs> Your stereotypical like. Might add that one. Gym, Very and muscular. I drink my protein shake this morning. I mean, that's okay. what I do, but, like, I don't consider myself a bro. Well, I don't know. I, bro? What to, I don't know how you describe it. Do you – all right, fine, Just Ben, are you a bro? very muscular. Are you a bro? What yes, is a bro? <laughs> my bros. I have bros. We're bros. Yeah, like, we have but, bro. Like, bro is, like, short for brother. muscular is not one of the requirements. <laughs> but that's what I think of as, like, a bro. Like, one of those, like – you gotta fix tough, your definition of bro. Tough bro. guys. Apparently, I need to work on it. You yeah. know what? Hold on. Hold on. I mean, what think about it? the father of Brodom, Barney Stinson. Yeah. Neil Patrick Harris. I, no, actually, actually, Neil Patrick I love Patrick Neil Patrick Harris. Harris. Um, I mean, he's, he's much, a, but he's not like Bradley Martin. He's, Jack. he's lean. He's, fit. he's lean. He's fit. Listen to this. Yeah. Urban Dictionary. What is a bro? An alpha male idiot. <laughs> you want to be a bro? That sounds sexist. That, has, that sounds very negative. You have negative. to look up the how. You know what? Time out. You can cut this if you want to. I'm getting the book, Tim. Wow, this oh, podcast no, is running away. I still haven't decided if we're editing. 
It might be at school. Hang on. Okay, okay. Well, okay. While he goes and looks for that book, let's get back on topic here. <laughs> it does exist, lady and gen- ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> the bro the code. By... Has this now. I bought it. The fact that for me, it. the dedication <laughs> is for me. The best bro I know. Yeah, Tim bought it for me. Wait, did I honestly? The bromance is real. <laughs> what is a bro? You've probably heard the word bro used liberally at your local bar or gym. You've seen it recklessly confused with dude or guy in an adventure-themed soft drink commercial. Maybe even you yourself have unwittingly tossed out a bro when asking a stranger for the time. But an important, quest- an important distinction question must be drawn. Just because a guy is a dude doesn't mean that the dude is a bro. Question, what is a bro? Answer, a bro is a person who would give you the shirt off his back when he doesn't want to wear it anymore. A bro is a person who will bend over backwards to help you bend someone else over backwards. In short, a bro is a lifelong companion you can always trust, will always be there for you unless he's got something else going on. That's a bro. There is no muscle requirement in this definition. Well, my Urban Dictionary is different from your bro novel. All right. So has anybody taken normal online classes? Ben, yes. Ben, you said that you did. <laughs> yeah, Ben already did. I took one last semester. It was a history online class. So it was just like a prereq requirement, nothing to do with my major. Mm-hmm. But um, it was still a different experience because the format was set up to be an online class, right? Compared to this emergency pandemic transition that we made. Um, I think that a lot of people think online classes is a gateway to easy A's and I don't know if that's true. <laughs> um, definitely wasn't to. Our school expanded the pass fail option. Sorry to cut you Part off a little one. bit, but yeah. Um, I didn't take advantage of it, but I am curious, did, did any of you? I did not. Um, I know a lot of other schools allowed pass fail even after your grades were released. Yeah. And I think that's a super interesting concept during this time because it's like you gave it your all and you tried your best. And then when your grades came out, you decided, okay, this isn't the best for my GPA. So let's pass fail it. But um, I'm never willing to take that chance to pass fail. I don't know. Cause I always like give myself the benefit of the doubt. Like mm-hmm. you still have halfway through to pull through, you know? Scott, I'm thinking about the economic incentives here. What, like nudges? Are you also? Yeah, about the difference between... Economic incentives. The difference between allowing them to pick the pass-fail after receiving the grade and forcing them to pick before they receive a grade. Given the circumstances, I don't think it should always be this way. What encourages students to try harder, though, do you think? encourage students to try harder i think after because after. like one of I'm one thinking. of my favorite um one of my favorite like things that some professors do is if you do poorly on the midterm they'll replace it your grade with the, your final grade if your final grade is better yeah so that motivates you to do better down the line like you you're okay with doing bad now you know what i mean but if you or pass a down mid semester that's it like you know that grade's going to be pass fail. I would like instead of reaching for that 90, 9500, I'd be like, okay, if I get above 65, it's all right. Like Yeah. I think if you pa- if they force you to pass fail before your grades are in or before we get our grades, then you would choose to pass fail and then you wouldn't work as hard like Emily said because you're you're passing fail so your aim is passing because not, if you're above passing, it's all I look at it as like the bare mm-hmm. minimum to get that P. Yeah. Your goal is a P, not an A. What's a what right. do you have to exactly. get a P? Pass fail. That was well said. Sixty-five pass typical. Fail afterwards, okay. It's like you're working hard for the four, but then if you don't get it, or if you get too low, then you're like, okay, I worked hard. I know my stuff, but like this isn't my best. Pass fail, and it won't affect your grade. But then again, what about okay. the kids that want the P over the? Oh, but then they could just take the P later. Because I was gonna yeah. say, what if there's a P in the middle, but then you get stuck with like a B plus later on? But then you could just uh, still continue to get that P. I'm convinced. 
you guys make a compelling argument. It's it's definitely better to allow them to pick pass fail after the fact. I'm interested to see what other of like our viewers schools did. Because I know that every school did something differently during this time. Yeah. I mean, look at our school, they did a whole petition and wanted to get pass fail extended, right? And I don't think it worked out. Not a thing. I did think our pass fail expansion was a was a bit narrow. Yeah. It was only you could only well first of all you, we can pass fail like two classes per semester is that it? No, one typically they expanded one it. One typically to, they expanded it to two. Oh. And I'll follow up for Ben but not in your major <laughs> minor concentration. I was just going to say that. Um So we tr- we try not to knock our school and I, I don't think that there is much to knock our school on, honestly. I think we all love I our agree. school a ton. Um, but I, th- I think that's an acceptable one for us to say. I wish there was more options with the pass fail. And I just think, like, during this time, everyone's circumstances are different. Like, I think we're all lucky that, um, like, my dad's working every day, but he's essential in the sense that he's not working in a hospital or anything in the medical field, but he's still going in. Mm -hmm. But I can't imagine what a household is like that has situations that are different, right? Or if they have anyone who has been exposed or even the fear of being exposed. Like, I can't imagine what that brings. So I don't know if the school system really understood that when we were making this transition. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Didn't I, did I ask you guys about this? But like, what do you do if you actually have the coronavirus? Like, how do you... How do you actually do your classes? I guess in that case, you would just tell them, but what's stopping students from being like, hey, Dr. F, like I have Corona. Like you could, they could ask for a doctor's note. Right. That's true. Um, Or just a self. Is that offensive of them to not, to not honor that in such a serious time? I don't know. Most would. Like, if the professors yeah. were like, oh, hey, Ben, so you have corona, send me a doctor's no. note. No, that's fine. Like, I get it. You need proof, yeah. Right. But, like, it would, it's definitely not okay if students just, like, made it up. Like, No, morally, that's off. How do you get but, a doctor's note, though? You can't, like, most doctors won't even let you in. I'm sure when you get diagnosed, you go to take the test, and then I'd imagine it's an email that you get. Uh, I mean, yeah. I haven't been tested. Right. I do actually have a family member who was tested. Um, came out positive and she's been better for like two months now so all good oh my god thank god um i'm pretty sure that you like get an id number kind of thing and then after a couple of days they send you an email and you have to like go to a website and put in your id number yeah so the way that that works i'm sure that there's some legal paperwork that they give you that you would also be able to give to an employer yeah right because of course they understand that you're most likely going to need to do something with this information. Because even if you feel fantastic, but you have coronavirus, then I guess you can do online classes, but you shouldn't go to work. So you're definitely going to need a note in that situation. And it all all depends on how serious you get it. Like, I'm sure some students in college got corona, but were asymptomatic or like only had a little a soft symptom not like in the hospital like on a respirator so it's like sometimes i know people who cold were showing symptoms before we were really aware of it in like december january and they went to the doctor they got um inhalers and antibiotics and basically before we really understood what corona was and they just recently got tested for the antibodies just to see you know what was going on then yeah because now the symptoms do line up so i think i know i know quite a few people who had like the flu for the longest time and and didn't know what it was and it wasn't the flu and are now curious yeah that's why you guys think that if you have the antibodies and you did carry corona before that you are immune i'm just curious well there's always um risk of a mutation and you could get it again yeah, it's like the flu every year. 
but also the antibodies, there has been some evidence of people getting it a second time in, from South Korea, I believe, um, and a couple in the U.S. that I've heard of. But it's not like they full-blown got it again because they have antibodies after the first time. So they're a little bit more well-prepared. That's all that I've been hearing. But right. it's possible to get it again, just not as bad. I don't know. I, so, again, we're not experts. We always try to clarify that. Thank My you. Yeah, we are, Emily. Okay. <laughs> um, I just texted Tim and I was like, am I allowed to say Corona? <laughs> yeah, YouTube, YouTube allows it now. Thank you, um, YouTube. We're not monetized anyway. Yeah, we're not monetized. But, yeah, but, I, but you never know. I can yeah. take our podcast down. <laughs> yeah. I was going to say, as far as uh, the contagious or, or ability to get it again, I think that it can happen infrequently kind of like what is this face i'm sorry i was watching scott sip his mug what was that i thought he was reacting to me um this is distracting (laughs) that water bottle puts ben back in the bro category but i'm gonna stop what wow i'm here for entertainment (laughs) (laughs) many definitions (laughs) <laughs> People can get diseases, even like chicken pox, twice. It's just very rare because you have the antibodies for chicken pox after you've had it once or been vaccinated. Right. But you, you can get it again. I just and wonder it, what this means rare. in terms of us like returning back to campus. As far as coronavirus, my guess is that, and again, not an expert, this virus occasionally can reinfect a person perhaps even at a slightly higher rate than a disease like chicken pox. Right. But my guess is that this isn't a rampant problem that's going to like mess with all of our solutions. I think if you've had it, you're generally probably immune for at least several years. That's my guess. I just think that they're going to, they're going to treat this like the flu every year and how it's going to mutate every year and that we're going to have to get vaccinated every single year. So the other thing that, again, so far from an expert, um, this virus is, because remember, viruses need a host to reproduce, and mutations happen when an organism reproduces. This virus is spreading like a wildfire because it has so many potential hosts compared to like the flu that spreads slowly because so many people are vaccinated or any number of diseases. Because it's a pandemic, I think mutations are showing up very quickly but it's also uh, reproducing much faster than a typical disease would. So as this becomes something more typical in the human population, like the flu, I wouldn't be shocked to see the mutation rate slow down. And we haven't seen anything significant yet, just like little markers that they can find in the mutations. So I'm not sure. It might be a little early to guess whether this will regularly mutate, if you I'm get what I'm sure saying. I heard somewhere that I think it was a CDC website, something like that, where under all the different types of SARS, because this is a form of SARS, um, mm-hmm. that this has already had two strains before it came out of, before it like spread from China. Um, there was like uh, a mild were, strain and a more serious strain, but those were old SARS though from 2003 and MERS from. I don't think MERS is actually eradicated yet. No, like during this pandemic, like before it came out of China, like it had already mutated into two strains, one stronger and one weaker. I think that that's very, a very minor difference and they're not sure about that because there's like the European strain they're calling it and the Chinese strain. So the, the Chinese strain infected the West coast of the U.S., And the European strain infected the East Coast and most of the rest of the U.S. And that's, they can tell the difference between the two strains because they're little mutations, but nothing of any significant difference. Okay. Um, So That's what I read in the Wall Street Journal. You guys (laughs) want to get into advice Uh we want to give students 
to succeed in online classes. I have a, I, I thought of a couple of tips before the podcast started, but if you guys have anything. I think definitely focus on time management, efficiency, and I think for me, it works better to just do my tasks in the morning so I have the rest of the day because you never know what will pick up like as you start. I mean, I don't know if everyone's like at the point where they're leaving their house or going to the stores or quarantining or social distancing, hanging out with friends, but I like to just do all my important tasks in the morning so then it's open game for whatever else is to come in the afternoon, whether that's family time, making lunch, dinner, whatever the case may be. Um, I have a bit of very specific advice. Like if you have a test or whatever, or and you feel like you didn't do very well and you just like got murdered by taking the test and you're like stressed afterwards, that happened to me and that happened to Tim. And I just blow off some steam afterwards, like literally – after my test, Tim and I hopped on like Battlefront Two and just like played. Oh while. yeah, yes, we it's allowed on. to rage. You're allowed to rage quit school. Yeah, yes. it's fine. Like, yes. be upset. Just don't like be overly upset. <laughs> like, but it's like, but also like a video back. game. You have to come back. Sorry to cut you off. Ben. There's always respawns in that. real life. <laughs> okay. Okay. No. Okay. Please, no one take that seriously. <laughs> <laughs> what? I think that's good advice though, because it's there. It's not all gonna be smooth sailing especially with online so that is important for sure even if it's like going for a run and like facetiming your friend and being like i'm pissed yeah like i know i called ben and i was like i'm not having a good time right now i don't remember that but yes that happened you don't remember that no <laughs> rude <laughs> yeah a little bit <laughs> just cut that part out um <laughs> What? I you need to let off some steam after this. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta hop I guess <laughs> with online classes, I think it's really important for people to stay busy and active over the summer because I'm totally aware if fall happens online and people have been like relaxing, not doing anything over the summer, like just video games or maybe... I don't know. What else would people do staying inside? Binge watching Netflix. Binge watching Netflix. Watch Star Wars. Reading, reading watch, is perhaps watch. a little bit better because then you'll stay in the habit of reading. Yeah. But if you like a lot of these. Yeah. yeah. Actually do that. Watch Avatar on Netflix. Watch um, Avatar a lot. <laughs> but if you stay in this, if you fall out of the habit of school, I think that the fall is going to be like so difficult to figure out at home. And it's going to be like starting from square one, but perhaps even worse than when we moved to emergency pandemic because you were already somewhat in school mode. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? For sure. Yeah. Uh, honestly, just some quality life advice. Uh, my grandfather hear, lived. What? I love to hear quality life advice. Always. Quality life advice. My grandfather Read lived. Read the compound effect. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> and quality life advice. Anyway. <laughs> my, grandfather, my, my grandfather lived to be 92 years old. And he claims, I believe him, that he did that by keeping his mind and body in shape. And he, like he, when he was like 85, he would like tell us stories about how he like goes to the gym like four days a week and like he lifts weight and stuff. He was a crazy guy. Anyway, but he loved learning. Like he knew like seven languages that he didn't learn in school. It was like he started learning these when he was like 40 years old. He learned like seven languages. He was reading books all the time. He knew all sorts of different kinds of music and like the origin of the music. He was a huge fan of science and math. Like just keep learning. Like I know we're, we're it, nah, that was bad. We're in the summer. It's over the summer. <laughs> that was so smooth. <laughs> we're over the summer right now. I know that we don't want to learn. We just want to like relax. And if you have a job, like that's great. Make your money and stuff. But like, read books i'm a huge fan of youtube videos next semester possibly i don't know tim and i are taking linear algebra together so i'm like watching linear algebra videos on youtube and like i'm really interested in neural networks right now and like coding and machine learning so like i watched like a video on that and it was like oh linear algebra is really important for this i was like okay back to the linear algebra videos so wow, I'm, putting me to sleep. I'm just yeah. kidding i'm just kidding so like, like, don't stop learning. Like, find something interesting. Just not like buy a textbook, Tim. 
I mean, like, there's so course. many resources right now that offer free courses, and I think that's cool because there's nothing on the line, like financially, educationally, like your GPA is not attached to it. Right. And mm -hmm. you could learn stuff that you want to learn. So it's not like the prereqs that your school is making you take or that one annoying math class for your major or minor. And yeah. it's like, you know, it's a less painful approach to keep your brain sharp for sure. That was nice. Case, I, that was, I have a thought. <laughs> yeah. Shout out yeah. to Udemy and Skillshare. Those are two very useful uh, learning websites. I was going to say Khan Academy. Like In if that, you're yeah. into your math, science, coding, I think they have history classes. Yeah, they have history. I don't know about English. I never used it for that. Um, I use it to review like calculus before I took Calc 3, but like they have a lot of good education things. If you want to like catch up, if you want to review a little bit from last semester or school year, I know that's rare, but like if you want to get ahead a little bit, which is, I'm never going to underestimate reading ahead or learning ahead of classes. And you'll be surprised how much you enjoy a subject when you're not forced to do it. Like yeah. no one's forcing yeah. you to do it. You're doing this an hour, 30 minutes, an hour a day, your free time. It's going to be way less painful than you expect. Seriously. And that's honestly the part of the reason why people love college so much because in high school, they're like, sorry, Tim. They're like, Tim's like, like next. I, I'm not an English person by any means. I love math and science. I hate <laughs> English. In high school, I but can't do college is great. Go ahead, Tim. <laughs> oh, I got called on. Um, <laughs> in case. <laughs> Ben, ben literally just was like, microphone. <laughs> um, if anybody needs any like inspiration during this pandemic to learn something, Isaac Newton was in quarantine for the bubonic plague when he invented calculus. Wow. So, I don't know. I mean, I'm not saying you're going to invent calculus. I'm not saying I am or anything of that magnitude, but... This truly is a unique time where so much that so many of the distractions of life have been removed and you can learn so much. And I I'd say make the most of this terrible situation. Yeah. Yeah. Even if it's towards like personal growth, like stuff that you wanted to do for yourself, your mental health, your overall wellness, if you want to eat better. Like I told Ben I want to like run more and like build up my endurance. And I remember that. Yeah, and <laughs> I have not been doing good job. Yeah, I know. I remember that too. But A for effort. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. I will say a real practical uh, piece of advice is if you're struggling focusing on your schoolwork, a homework assignment, or an online quiz or test that you have to complete, turn your phone off and put it in another room where it's not even close to you. I find that when your phone is – actually, my phone's right here throw that way <laughs> um when your phone is right next to you it distracts you so much um and i read something that it takes like 15 Ben's frozen mid hair flip i'm sorry uh, okay. <laughs> that's great um once you get out of that the zone crazy. of doing your work and you look at your cell phone or whatever it takes you 15 minutes to get back into the zone of whatever you're doing so and that that's a lot of time that you could have been spending doing something productive right and i tried to acknowledge too like I don't want to feel so attached to my phone because right now, like majority of all my friends are also doing the same thing I am at home. So like, there's no real sense of urgency. You know what I mean? Like if I'm scrolling through Instagram or Snapchat text, like nothing really has changed from yesterday. So I'm trying to not have that FOMO that I probably once had when I was at school or over winter or spring break, seeing what everyone's doing. Cause chances are they're doing a whole lot of nothing or a whole lot of what you're doing. Yeah. Can I, can I, Emily, can I ask you a quick question? Yeah. Why is it that we see so many, I mean, this is girls specifically, but guys do it too. Posting old pictures of themselves on social media during a pandemic. So I think people are doing that just to keep putting out content, right? Like realistically, girls aren't going to just stop posting because it's become like oh who what if she's talking to someone she wants to see oh my god will he like my picture like sometimes people are bored and just want to like literally post to see who'll like who'll comment maybe they genuinely like it and they're looking back through their photo like their camera roll i've spent so many nights where i'm just like mm -hmm. 
oh, look what, look what I was doing last summer. Look what I was doing winter break because now you have that downtime. So I think it's kind of just like a reminiscing thing or like a social experiment. And I think my dogs agree. <laughs> <laughs> I'm playing with my hair now. Do, why? Do you guys think it's annoying? Yes. I, well, I really you're do. You're scrolling through Instagram looking for some content. So we're just providing. No, like that's the thing I've been trying to work on with myself. Say you're welcome, is, Emily. Yeah. <laughs> providing, the, providing the likes. Take me later. <laughs> providing the likes. Um, no, I've been trying to uh, stop going on social media. No, I I agreed. I, I totally agree with you. I've been honestly, like a personal goal of mine is getting my screen time down. My screen because, time was down like, to like two hours a day during the semester. And now it's at like five and a half. <laughs> yeah. I watch so much YouTube on my phone. My screen time's always like five hours. So that can, that can be yes. productive. Very, very often ben seven or eight. Ben texted me and said, wow, you've been on your phone quite a bit. Oh, Ben's frozen. Ben's frozen. This guy. And oh, I was bad. like, Ben? Explain. Literally, can you guys hear me now? Like, I don't know. Yeah, yeah good. we can hear you. Okay, so during the semester, uh, myself, Tim, and our other roommate, Alex, we would, like, go to bed at, like, what, like, 11.30 midnight? Oh, no, no, no. You're going there. I'll just sit back. 11.30 midnight most nights. And then literally, like, sometimes I would wake up at, like, 3 in the morning because I'm, like, I'm really thirsty or I'd go to the bathroom or whatever. I look over. Tim is on his phone watching YouTube videos at three in the morning. Like, he literally doesn't go to bed. He watches YouTube videos for hours. If it's educational, I, I have no problem. I so with much at night. Yeah. <laughs> okay, yes. I have to hand it to him. He stays up, he like sleeps four hours a day or whatever. I don't know. But he literally knows so much random stuff and so much useful stuff. A little jealous, but like, I like my sleep. Little useful? Yes. <laughs> It's accomplished. Yeah. Every piece of knowledge you learn is useful. Like sifting. You ever go to like the cave museums that they have where you can like go into the cave and you like get the sand and there's like yes. crystals yes, in there? And we know what sifting is when you're doing this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I was painting the picture. This is a podcast. We have to paint an audio, audiological picture. And subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> Like, subscribe, paint a picture. We need some fan art. Give us some fan art. Oh, yeah. That'd be sick. Oh, that would be cool. Anyway. Now we're looking if at you submit some eyes. fan art, you have a chance of having your fan art put on a t-shirt. Or on a virtual background. I think if they submit fan art, they should have a chance of being featured on the podcast. As a virtual background. Within yeah. reason. We have, we have to have a certain, certain age yeah. requirement for that. We'll see. Some incentive. No promises. Anyway, so what are your thoughts on the fall semester for like class is going to be online, not online? I personally think it's a huge liability for schools to bring us back in the fall. Even if they test us the second we walk on campus, whatever, I'm no, I don't know. I'm no expert, but if they take all the precautionary measures, I just don't think it's enough given the consequences of what we've seen and what could happen. Um, I feel so bad that so many of like the schools and universities that we love and wish we could have like our senior year, any, any grade, freshman, sophomore, junior, senior, whatever the case may be. I don't think anyone should lose that experience, but I just think that so much is on the line. If we go back, what if we all are, test negative, clean, like 100% of everyone on campus has nothing. And I want to go eat at the diner or go pick up from the diner or go to Walmart or I go home to see my dad for the weekend. And like interactions that you just don't know. Are we really going to monitor every single student? It's not know. physically possible. Mm. The other question that I have is if they allow us to go back and then campus is incredibly locked down while we're there. Like I said, no guests in the dorm. And like, it's an, it's like an enforced policy and, and perhaps classes are half the size that they used to be. I don't know exactly how they'd manage it, but if they figured out a way, you know, is it worth going back under those 
circumstances, you know, right. because right. then like, it's would so you much even have the same experience, right? Yeah, it's so much different than what you bought or, or wanted to have. So yeah. I don't know. It's just that I think that's also a legitimate consideration, depending on how much different the actual on campus semester would be than what they wanted for on campus. And also, I think that when we've been at school in the past, look at how quickly things spread from like the flu to, I mean, it's so much contact with so many students. And I think it would bring a heightened level of anxiety for students and parents, you know, like your kids are away at school. So some of them are going off for the first time in their life, like learning to live on their own. It could definitely be a scary experience, like the fear of the unknown or mom, um, I'm really not feeling good. I have a cough. Like, what should I do? You know, even if it is just a cough, but it could mm -hmm. bring heightened levels for sure. Honestly, some advice for incoming freshman, college freshmen that just graduated from high school. Don't underestimate thinking about taking, like not starting immediately, like maybe take the semester or take the whole year, take a gap year. Um, honestly, I've seen some stats that show that students that take gap years do between high school and college do better. But maybe not a gap year because they can't do much right now. I think you, they should take online classes at like a local yeah. university. Go to community like, college, take some community. online classes. Because like, I think gap year is like some travel time, some friends time, some YOLO time, but I don't think this is it. Yeah. yeah, like I think it was the pre uh the pre podcast that we were talking about this, but right now with this like uh labor market, you're better off getting an education right now a lot of the time than just increasing your employment potential. Yeah. I think that's all I have to say. It's a super depressing topic. I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm hopeful yeah. we go back. We didn't but... even talk about online classes the majority of the time. <laughs> <laughs> but that's fine. That's fine. Yeah, I'll let the conversation go where it goes. We're bros. Yeah. Um... <laughs> oh, I'm getting that book oh. out once we stop recording, Emily. Don't worry. I Maybe I'm wrong. I'm so wondering about my faults. Like, if that, but I don't know. If that book says something different than Urban Dictionary, we just have two different definitions. Well, you're going to have my definition in a couple minutes. <laughs> no word can have two different definitions. That's it. Anyway. 80% of statistics are wrong. Fake news. <laughs> that, was a, that was a joke. I'm really tempted to share my worst, my least favorite word of the English language, but I'm not sure how entertaining mm -hmm. it would be. Is it purple haired oh. lady from Last Jedi? No, the word hour, as in like the hour? communal oh, possessive. Yeah. Okay. Oh, you are? It hour. has a, it, yes, it has a huge flaw. What's the flaw? It doesn't, it doesn't have a plural. Now that I'm, now that I'm saying it on a podcast, I forget the grammatical words. It doesn't have an, there it is, inclusive and exclusive form. Am I talking about our ball as in, my brother and I's ball or our ball, like the podcast cruise ball. If I say our, you don't know if I'm I would take it as the person you you're saying not. it to. If I was like talking to Tim and I was like, Tim, it's ours. But I, if I'm talking to all of you, then I think it's context ben, clues. Tim, Scott. Context, you gotta yeah. rely on the context exactly. clues. Yeah. Least favorite word in the English language, though. I was gonna say something, I completely forget what it was. Terrible word. So final, oh, final everybody's thoughts. Everybody's judging me. No, right, judge me. Okay, so final thoughts. We'll go. Who wants to go first? I'm not gonna nose goes this. Emily, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not nose your... goes worthy. Okay. So final... concluding thoughts. Or final thoughts. Yes. On Ladies online classes. Too. On online classes. Shit, I'm not having a good time, bro. No, I'm just kidding. Um, Whoa. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think you should plan out when all your assignments are due. I think that you definitely have all the resources to get 
a good grade, communicate with your professors, make friends with people in the class, just talk it out. Even if you're like, did you think that test was hard? Um, did you do, did you start the essay yet? Like just open communication, um, take summer classes if you have the chance, knock some classes out of the way for the fall. That means you're taking four instead of five if you're getting ahead, but just keep your brain sharp. Um, look at a lot of the free resources that are available online. Um, I started taking courses from Harvard EDX where you could pay like an updated fee for like a certificate or you could just take the course for free. They're like five to 13 weeks. So I think that's pretty cool, but just be open-minded about how you spend your time during the summer because you have the potential to like do well and I don't know, not to be cheesy, but like whatever you do during this time is gonna benefit you or like affect you somewhere else later. You know, because mm -hmm. we'll like I don't think ever again in my life I'll have m endless months where I'm. This is the first summer I'm not working. I'm not at the beach. I'm not at the pool. You know, so like use your time somewhere where you'll be like grateful for later. That's Honestly, all. the number of like trick shot videos that have come out of the quarantine, like wow, we are so productive when we're locked in houses all day. No. <laughs> like this guy with a golf club holding a disc between two expo markers. Hitting the disc into By the head. way, uh, I saw that. A disc is a frisbee. Just saying for anybody no. who doesn't speak. It actually wasn't this time? It was an Xbox game disc. Oh, that kind oh. of disc. Okay. Okay, was I the only one who thought he meant a frisbee? I did because it's Ben yeah. who loves Ultimate Frisbee. Yeah, that's what I thought, Ben. <laughs> no, I would say. Ben calls a frisbee a disc. I don't no, know. No, I call a frisbee a frisbee. frisbee if bro? we're playing ultimate, if we're playing the game ultimate, it's a disc. Only then. Weird flex. Like I thought it's called ultimate frisbee. No, it's called ultimate. It's not called ultimate disc. It's USA Ultimate. That is the governing body, USA Ultimate. You are all like. <laughs> I'm pondering. <laughs> <laughs> um so my i guess my best advice and this is what i'm trying to do try to stay busy over the summer because if classes are online in the fall if you don't stay busy over the summer it's going to be terrible May maybe you're not like me but if i don't stay busy over the summer the fall is going to be horrendous if it's online yeah i remember going back in the past and i'm like how do i even write like you forget how to hold a pencil for a second like it sounds stupid but I've done the same thing. Yeah. Like, I know you know the feeling where you're like, uh. Oh, that's my left hand. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, a voice I, I'm a math <laughs> major. And if I don't do any math over the summer and then I go back to school, I've you, literally, you multiple times. I've literally gone back and been like, multiplication? <laughs> we got to wrap up this I'm podcast. I'm seven is 64. Like, it's bad. Yeah, so my final thoughts are just, um, as Tim said, stay productive, uh, stay busy. Me, personally, I, I feel awful if I'm not doing something productive. Um, have less screen time on your phone. Remove all the distractions. Um, if any tips, if I were to give a tip on, like, focusing, I would say um, definitely put earbuds in, noise-canceling headphones, play music. If you're into that, um, try to find, like, a... Uh, secluded area or something in your house i know that's difficult in these times but um yeah and then just read some motivational books they help listen write to down some your goals in the morning that right. reminded me. listen to some podcasts like this one subscribe share like comment <laughs> of course he freezes right at the end oh wait say it uh, again say it then we want to hear from you please comment yeah Fan they were art. sending me screenshots of your comments, like, where's Emily, LOL. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so my extra final thoughts, like everybody said, stay busy, but don't stay too busy. Like, it is the summer. Relax. You don't want to burn yourself out right before the semester starts. Put in even, like, 30 minutes, an hour a day, like, something. Yeah, just a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I have to study for exam P, so I'm studying. I'm doing, like, one section a day for now or – Maybe one. That's like time. a probability. Well, yeah. lost my words. Probability. It's exam probability for my actuary degree. So, like, I'm still studying. I'm still learning things. But like, 
I'm listening to audiobooks with Audible. I'm playing Minecraft with Tim. Just like, so stay busy. Just, just but, Tim? Like, the what? Yeah, no. You streamed Scott, one. you haven't been on. Yeah. That was yeah. so rude, Ben. <laughs> I literally Scott, you two days. Okay, no, two Scott, days ago. Scott was on two days ago for like, how long did we stream? Three hours? I don't Cause even he's know. Because he's being productive with his time. Exactly. Really? I'm reading. He's reading. I'm well, reading too. And yeah, reading. I listened to four hours of an audiobook, Darth Plagueis, on Audible. Check it out. While Tim and I Minecrafted for four hours. No, honestly, if you guys want a break from going on drives for audiobooks, if you've got Minecraft. Audio and Minecraft, for real. Tim was right. I okay. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Right. We, gotta, we gotta wrap up this episode. <laughs> <Wrap it up. laughs> like, subscribe, share, share with your friends, comment. I don't know. Donate. Okay. okay, that's it. That's it. Okay, we'll see you guys in the next one. Yeah, good luck.